Attention. Everyone follow me. Follow the leader, 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 follow the leader, 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 follow the leader, 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 follow the leader, leader. <laughs> Hi friends, I'm the Saxophone Oracle, and this week we're going to talk about voice leading. So voice leading, many of you have probably heard this term before. Uh, we hear it a lot in jazz music as improvisers, we hear people talking about the importance of voice leading. They're working on voice leading, they're doing voice leading exercises. So I want to unpack this a little bit. We're going to talk about what voice leading is, the definition, how it's implied, and why it's important. Now this is a big topic, so I thought I would tackle this in two videos. This week's video, we're going to talk about voice leading in general, voice leading as a whole, how in, in music at large it's applied, why it's important, etc., how it works. And in next week's video, we're going to look at voice leading as it's applied in jazz improvisation, how the instrumentalist goes about applying voice leading and, and practices voice leading. Because I think even though these two things encompass the same world, they come from the same place, there are two separate definitions and two separate applications. Uh, so that's it. So for today, let's dive into voice leading. What is it? How it's applied in the general sense. First things first, when we talk about voice leading, what, what is the voice? So this comes from choral music. This comes from you know, choir music. Generally speaking, we have four voices, four parts. So we have a bass or a baritone, we have a tenor voice, we have an alto voice, we have a soprano voice. And each of these voices has a different part to play that's, that's unique and independent to themselves. And in classical music, we study Bach chorale writing, things like that, and, and there's all rules applied to how the, the voices behave, etc. But really, when we're talking about voice leading, the voice itself refers to a chord tone. So if we have the chord C major 7, and we have the C, the root, we have E, the third, we have G, the fifth, and we have B, the seventh. So each voice is each note of the chord. And then when we're talking about leading, it's when the chord changes from this C major, say to F major over here, it's how does each chord tone, how does each voice resolve and move to the next chord tone? And ideally, this is going to happen as smoothly as possible. Because what we want when we're creating our music or our, our accompaniment, things like that, we want everything to move smoothly from one chord to the next, a nice homogeneous, logical progression of, of the harmony. Because right? if, if it's jagged, then, you know, if the chord goes from here to here to here to here, then our music is going to sound disjunct and choppy, right? So we want really homogeneous linking each individual voice or chord tone as smoothly as possible to the next chord in our sequence. And ideally we're going to do this by tone or by semitone or, you know, with as little big leaps as possible, right? smooth and, and and think about this because why you know I brought up the idea of we don't want it to be disjunct and, and choppy but think about if you were singing in a choir right and you're doing this inside voice you're not singing the melody you're singing the company part the melody's up here probably in the soprano so you don't want to be doing oh, 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 oh because it makes no sense it's going to be really hard to execute all those wide leaps and it, it's not going to be fun right we want something that is smooth and a line unto itself okay same thing in a big band if you're if you're arranging for big band and say the melodies in the trumpet and then you have the trombone section accompanying you don't want to see slides going like this right we want it to be easy to play we want it to be fun to play and we want it to be smooth and logical how do we achieve this? So there's a few things that we need to keep in mind. First, we talked about C major 7 chord. So what do we have? If we open usual theory book or exercise book, we're going to see we have the root, the C, then there's a space, 
And then on the next line, we have the E, the third, space. Next line, we have the G, space. Next line, B. So it's written this way because it's easy to present. It's a way to present the idea logically within an octave. So if you take the scale, we have the root, skip a note. We have the third, skip a note fifth, skip a note, seventh. We're stacking it, so it's easy to present, it's easy to visualize, and it's easy to understand. But if we're talking about the chord of C major, it's not important the order. What is important are the notes themselves. So in classical music, we talk about triads, you know, first inversion, second inversion, third inversion. C major seven chord, in order to have something sound, C major seven, you need C the root, you need the third E, you need the fifth G, and you need the seventh B. But they don't have to be in that order, right? The root can be up here, the third can be down here, the fifth can be in left field, the seventh can be in right field. It doesn't matter. If you look at a piano keyboard, they can be whatever. But what is, what is important is that you have those four notes and then you get the sound of C major. And this is very important because if we're going to move from C and the next chord to F, if everything is in root position, C, and we're moving to F, it's up here, and then we're going to move to B flat down there, and then E flat up here, we're going to get that whole disjuncted thing. So if we can get, wrap our heads around that we need these four notes to create the sound of C major, and that they don't have to be in this order, that's where we're going to get our voice leading. That's where we're going to move smoothly from C to F, to B flat, to E flat, and everything is going to move very homogeneously. Okay? So that's important. They don't have to be in root position. They can be anywhere. What's important is we have one, three, five, seven. One more thing. I don't want to go too deep into this for now, but it is important that we point it out. So in a chord, we have the four notes in a C major chord. Within that chord, there is a hierarchy of importance. So obviously, the root is important because that tells us what the basis is. Is it a C chord, an F chord, etc.? So we have the root, we have the third, we have the fifth, we have the seventh. Now, bear with me, I'll get to it in a minute, but the root actually isn't the most important note in the hierarchy. The most important note is the third, because whether the third is major or minor, that's going to give us the quality of the chord. The next most important note is the seventh, because that's going to tell us whether it's a, tomin, a tonic function, a dominant function, subdominant. The fifth is kind of unimportant. That's, that's an extra color. And then the root, while that's important, it's, we don't need it in the sense that if we're in a key of C, for example, we're in the key of C and we're playing harmonies all related to the key of C, so D minor, A minor, F major, G, things like that. If we don't have the root there, but we have the E and the B, the third and the seventh, then our, our ears are going to fill in that we're on the C chord, right? We can, we can fill that in because really what defines it is the third of the chord and the seventh of the chord. So while the root is important, we don't need it there. And the reason I bring this up is I don't want to confuse you, but the reason I bring it up is because in the hierarchy, when we're talking about chord progressions and how they move and relate to one another, the third and the seventh must be there. The fifth and the root, now these can be substituted and interchangeable. The fifth sometimes we can replace with the sixth, or in some cases the fourth, the eleventh. The root, sometimes we can substitute the ninth, things like that. And the reason why this is important is because as chords move, that's going to help us to move things more smoothly, and it also gives us other color options. So the third and seventh retain the sound of the C major. The other notes are color, and we can adapt them accordingly to make the smoothest voice leading possible. So I hope you're still with me thus far. This is a lot of theory to unpack in a short little bite. And I thought for the rest of the video, uh, it would be easiest just to demonstrate it at the piano. We'll take an overhead view so you can visualize the notes themselves. And I'll put um, the sheet music examples on the screen as well so we can look at this and try to understand the concept of moving the voices smoothly from chord to chord to chord to chord and understanding voice leading. All right, so let's take a look at this. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to... Um, 
I'm going to use the tune Autumn Leaves and I'm going to uh, do it just for the sake of visually making it easier. We're going to play in the key of C major or A minor, however you want to think about it. Um, so basically all the white notes. And uh, we'll start. So the first chord is a D minor 7, D, F, A, C. And then we go to G7, G, B, D, F, to the 1, so 2, 5 to 1, C major. To the 4 chord, F major 7. So if we play everything in root position, it's going to sound jarring. It's going to sound kind of all over the place. So we want to move each voice smoothly by step or by semitone, preferably, to the next chord in the sequence. And that's our voice leading. So if we start with a root position D minor 7 chord, then we'll go to G7, C major, F major, D minor 7 flat 5, E7, A minor major 7. A7. Right? So one, three, five, seven. Then the next chord we have five, seven, one, three. Then one, three, five, seven, five, seven, one, three. One, three, five, seven, five, seven, one, three. One, three, five, seven. So notice when I'm doing these root position voicings, how things resolve. So in D minor seven, here's the seventh. That seventh is gonna resolve by semitone to the third of the G7 chord, and then it's gonna hang out there and resolve to the seventh of the C major chord. It's gonna resolve down by tone to the third of the F major chord. It's gonna hang out there and become the seventh of the B minor chord, and it's gonna resolve down to the third of the E7 chord, and it's gonna hang out there to be the seventh of the A minor seven, uh, A minor major seven chord, and then when we go to A7, it's gonna become the seventh of that chord. And that's it, that's, that's voice leading in general. Now, again, we talked about how all we need are the four notes of the chord to make the chord sound, so they don't have to be in root position. We went to the five chord, it's in a different position. Well, maybe I'll put the root down here. Third, seven, five. That's a D minor chord, or uh, That's a D minor chord, so it can stretch the whole thing. What we need are those specific notes, and then we move them to the next chord smoothly. So you, you're going to want to check this out. Next time you're listening to a jazz record, you know, the piano player isn't doing like... Right? It's not bouncing all over the place. It's going smoothly from one chord to the next, or if they're playing just their left hand, you know, we have the third and the seventh. Or they'll put in three or four note voicings to make it more colorful, but you get the idea. And then the better we have command over this basic kind of voice leading, then we can start experimenting with extensions. Or I talked about we can substitute out the root for the ninth and the fifth for the thirteenth or the eleventh or things like that. And as we do that, then all of a sudden we have so many more colors and interesting options, especially if we start getting into the possibilities of dominant chords and, and the different alterations possible with the chord extensions. So I'm going to use the same chord sequence. This time I'm going to add one color note. So I'm going to do a four note voicing. We're going to start with this sort of grouping or pattern. Three, five, seven, nine. 
3579, so we have this extra extension. And then I'm going to show you, we're still going to move, all the voices are still going to move by semitone or tone smoothly, but when we do this, just to show you there's other color options available uh, when we start using extension. So it becomes really interesting, the voice leading, how it works. So D minor to G13 flat 9. C major 9 to F6 9, F major 7 6 9, uh, B minor 7 flat 5 to E7 flat 9 sharp 5 or flat 13, to A minor major 7 to A7 flat 9, back to D minor 9. And that's it. That's voice leading. Smoothly moving each chord tone to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. Um, and then, yeah, and uh, as you get into writing, like if it's Bach chorale writing or big band writing, then these become lines. But it's the same, same principle. Each note moves logically uh, through it, even if it's uh, an individual line. And that, that, my friends, is voice leading. So there you have the basics of voice leading, the basic principle and application of voice leading. Uh, I'm the saxophone oracle. That's part one of the two-part uh, series I'm going to do on voice leading. So next week we'll talk about the application of voice leading in jazz, how, how we use it that way, how it's defined that way. I hope you found the information useful, helpful. I hope it clarified some things. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you have questions, drop them in the comments. Send me an email. I'd love to address them in any future videos. Thank you, as always, for continuing to watch. Um, I wish you happy practicing, and I'll see you next week. See you next Tuesday. Bye for now.